If you could help me grab that, I'll be awesome. Lekrendo lomo shushum lambra bobo konsonto la dari keda bobo dori kedo shte yala mambo robo konsanda la dari keda bosa. I want to just quickly release you to a particular ministry, Jay. If you would come forward, there is a ministry that is most often not talked about, but it is called the ministry of compelling. When Jesus said, "Compel them to come," if you would just stand right here. There is a grace that is available. When the Bible talks about the ministry of helps, you know many have been called to various ministries. But one of the ministries that we don't usually talk about is the ministry of helps. And we usually think helps is limited to washing dishes and setting up the baptismal and all of that fancy stuff. But that is the ministry of the Holy Spirit because he is called the helper. And the Bible says it is the Holy Spirit that convicts the world of sin, the believer of righteousness. He is the one that compels you, that constrains you unto every good work. And the Lord will have me release you today to the ministry that compels others to look at the cross. Jesus says that as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever will look up to him shall be saved. You have to look to be saved. And somebody needs to tell them because the word of God lets us know how will they know unless we tell them. How will they believe what they have never heard? You will compel them to come and many will come to righteousness because of you. There are so many wandering away in the jungles of life who will not know of the ark until they have heard your voice. You are now out there as voice of him as a voice of him crying in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the lord bid them to come bid them to come in the mighty name of jesus i release you forth in jesus name god bless you praise the lord yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever and ever Hallelujah. You know, if your plan was to come and meet with the Lord today, I want to just say congratulations. You did well. Amen. And, um, and also, you know, sometimes, um, am I missing base in this thing? Can you just go a little deeper? Hallelujah. So that he can sound like me and not Kayla. Oh yeah, because some people have that high pitch voice and that's not me. So this microphone is trying to turn me into another man. Hallelujah. God is good. Alrighty, yeah, that's more like it now. Yes, by this shall all men know. Hallelujah. You know, there are times when you come for a meeting like this, for the rice, for the pudding or whatever else we bring, and then you somehow just meet with the Lord. That also happens. You know, because... Some people like uh, Nathaniel, they're just minding their own business. But then the Lord sees them and says, while you were yet under the fig tree, I saw you. The Lord will see you today. I thought somebody was going to say amen. You know, when you're waiting to see the doctor and you've been waiting and waiting and they say the doctor will see you now, what do you do? You get up and you move. The Lord will see you today. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Shalom ron diski tunduri alaba rut kundumanda. Colossians chapter one verse three. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, and of your love for all the saints. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And I just want to say this because on Saturday, it might have been, my wife was up here and she asked for prayers to be said for me. And um, one of the scriptures that she read, uh, please remind me, what scripture did you read again? Where it was talk talking about being at peace, living peaceably. Oh, come on, baby. It's only Saturday. You couldn't have forgotten. 
First Timothy 2. To you, it was about intercession. But for me, it was something else. And I'm going to tell you what it is. And I just was smiling because of the fact that that's been my heart desire. And it wasn't something that I had specifically mentioned to my wife that it was my desire. Uh, but when she started to say that prayer point, it was something that I had put before the Lord just a couple of months ago. I said of the many things um, that I desire, this is one thing that I desire in this season of my life above all else. And it took a while for me to come to this realization wherein the Lord gave me a word, an insight, and a perspective that helps me to be at peace in so many areas of my life. You know, someone of my upbringing, my uh, education, training, experience, and acumen, uh, often people like me often find themselves um, with multiple options and feeling guilty eventually for the choices they make because you're like, man, I could have done that. Why didn't I do that? Why did I do this? Well, why didn't I do that? Why did I do this? There was a time that I was going to open up a carpentry shop in 2014, I believe it was. I told myself I was done consulting and that I wanted to open up a carpentry shop because I think I was pretty good. Oh, I am pretty good at making furniture. And some of you have seen the tables and stuff that I build. And I'm like, that is just me building it in between conference calls. What if I dedicate some time and resources and bought tools rather than just those casual ones? I think I'm going to do a pretty good job. My wife talked to me out of it and our pastor at the time, well done to both of them. At another time, I said I was going to give up. This was back in the UK. I said I was going to give up IT engineering and I was going to be a property renovator. I was going to look for properties at the auction and buy them and renovate. And my sister talked me out of it. And so I still have a lot of things that you could say that I didn't really have closure on because I keep thinking, what if I had continued doing that? What if I had continued doing this? You know, back in 2011, before anybody even knew there was Bitcoin, I was trading in Bitcoin. When it was still like, I don't know, maybe like um, there was a time that I would buy Bitcoin for, I don't know, less than $50 or so. And um, yeah, I remember, yeah, I remember when I w whenever, I w whenever I came to America, I was in Atlanta. There was a place in Norcross where we would actually get coins for cash. You give them cash and they'll give you Bitcoins. And we used to kind of trade Bitcoins. We used it to pay people overseas to do work for us that we don't want to be found doing. Praise God. This is not a confession, it's just um, an illustration. And then I would sit sometimes and think to myself, if only I can remember my password and my account, I probably still have like, I don't know, 27 coins sitting somewhere. And then when Bitcoin was 65,000, I couldn't sleep because I would keep remembering. You multiply that by 27. Man, the Thanksgiving service is going to be amazing. You see what I mean? But then after a while, you know, I, I had to resign sort in a way, resign my ambition before the Lord. And this was what the Lord said to me. He said, what do you think my will is for you? And when he asked me that question, this was the scripture that came to my mind. And that was what my wife read as she was praying. You know, she was just like, oh, let's intercede, let's intercede. Yes, thank you for interceding. But this was what I heard. It says, therefore, I exhort, first of all, that all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, everybody, for kings and for all who are in authority, that they may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. I said, Lord, I just want to live a quiet and peaceable life. That immediately neutralized my political ambition. That, that gave me peace with regards to a lot of things that I thought I could have gone into, that I could have excelled in, that I could have been practicing till today because some of them did not come or would not have come with peace, peaceable and quiet as part of their description. They would be all over the place. 
And so I kept that to myself because sometimes, you know, until you know how to sell a thing to your wife, keep your mouth shut. Because if I had just gone to her and said, now I want to live a peaceable and quiet life, it may sound like I just want to do nothing. That sounds lacking ambition. And you don't want your wife to think for a moment that you have no ambition. Because the moment you look like someone who has no ambition, you're asking for trouble. Because you have to be up and doing and you have to have a vision and you have to have actions and strategies to back up your visions and, and not just talk about it. Go ahead and show and demonstrate your dedication through your fruition. It has to all go together. And so I kept it to myself and I wouldn't say anything until she came up here and she said, this is exactly what we will pray for Pastor Moses. And I'm glad that you all did it. Thank you so very much. Um, I didn't even know some people could pray in tongues until Saturday last week. So we thank God for that. Now, one of the reasons why I'm bringing that up today is because of the first scripture that we read, Colossians chapter 1, verse 3. It says that we give thanks. And I just want to appreciate Dr. John for inviting uh, Boney. Is, that, is he Boney? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for, for coming along. Good to see you. Oh, yes. And so if any one of you, if you speak French, you can go speak French to him after service. He's from the Congo. Yeah, he speaks French. So if you're one of those people, you can go and try your... Yeah, you go test your skills. You know, when I saw him today, I was like, oh, moi, je m'appelle Moïse. <laughs> and I was praying under my breath that he would not continue the conversation because he might, I might have to start speaking in tongues. But then if anyone asked him now, do I speak French? He would say, oh, oui, oui, oui. Because I was, everything I was saying, you know, I was calculated. You know, if I don't know what he would say in response, I wouldn't say it. Anyway. Rosemary, the Lord be with you. So it says, we give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. And Paul was very intentional about what things he said to the people of, Col of Colossae. He said, we're praying for you always. We give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, because of the fact that there were people who were of the dissension uh, who were beginning to say that maybe Jesus was just a prophet, but he wanted to remind them that if you're one of those people, you do not come under this prayer. This prayer is only for those who do not doubt that Jesus is the Son and the only begotten Son of God, okay? And so it was very intentional. And to let them know that that prayer was not just for, it wasn't a blanketed prayer. It wasn't for everybody. He specifically said this in verse 4, we're praying for you since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of your love for the saints. And so if you're saying, why was Pastor Moses prayed for specifically and why wasn't I prayed for? I believe the reason why the Holy Spirit inspired in my wife to pray for me and to encourage others or to ask you all to join in the prayers is because of my faith and my love for the saints. Praise the Lord. You see, because at the end of the day, if I make a boast, my boast is in the Lord. You know, because to say that I am confident of my faith is because I know that he gave me a measure of faith and that faith continues to be tested and tried. You see what I mean? If my faith isn't constantly tested and tried, then I can't come here and say, oh, I'm a man of faith. I'm a man of faith because I have been humbled through the process of being able to lay claim to faith. Praise the Lord. And of my love for the saints, I can also boast because I have allowed the Holy Spirit to do his work on the inside of me, even his perfect work, because there are certain things that I have gone through that should have hardened my heart and made me bitter. But then I have become stronger and better. You know, there's a difference between being stronger and being hardened. Many of us would think we're strong, but we're just hardened. You see, true, soft, true strength includes flexibility. And so, thank God for faith and love for the saints. I want to encourage you if you're here and the call of God is ringing in your ears and, and, and nudging at your heart, I want to encourage you, go for it. 
The reason being that you cannot serve God and lose. You understand what I mean? Be a man and a woman of faith. Believe the things that you study in the word of God. Knowing fully well that you will be tested. But in all these things we are more than conquerors. For the trying of our faith is ultimately to develop within us godly character. Or to develop within us character. So that we can be godly people. So none of these things that we have been called to is meant to be a burden unto us. Jesus says my burden is light and my yoke is easy. One of the things that you can do in life without a backup plan that you can do and that you should even do without reservation is pursuing the call of God that is upon your life because when push comes to shove, God will help you realize that you are not alone even if he has to raise intercessors from the other side of the world to come and be allies with you in this battle of faith. So be confident in the Lord and in the power of his might. Because faithful is he who has called, who will also do it. Hallelujah. The Bible says, if I let us, let us, um, let us wrap up on that because I want to take us on a journey to, to the book of John chapter 1 and uh, expose and reveal to us certain things that should be on the mind of every believer today. But before I do that, I'm going to share with you a little, a, a quick vision. So earlier today, I, I thought I was minding my business, but then apparently I, have, I had walked into certain places in the spirit. By the time I realized it, the weight of the burden that I was seeing in the spirit had almost taken me over. Now let me explain a little bit what, I'm, what I just said, because when it happens to you, do not be like Jacob who said the Lord was here and I knew it not. So what I was doing was very mundane, right? In the natural, what I was doing was very mundane. I was looking at emails and in between, I was looking at text messages and just trying to make sure that nothing was urgent that I wasn't attending to just yet. But unbeknownst to me, my spirit was being attentive to a heavenly call. And in the past, or at some point in the past, I would dismiss of that because that's not what I was currently doing. We need to understand that we are multi-dimensional beings. We are made in the image and in the likeness of God. Our Heavenly Father is omnipresent and also omnipotent and omniscient. And what all of, all of those things are also a, a attributes of you and I. They are attributes of you and I, potentially. So let's not limit ourselves to one place at a time. At any given time, you can be useful to God and useful to yourself and useful to others at the same time. All right? So the emails that I was looking at and the text messages part of it was looking out, I mean, looking after myself, looking at, after other people, being useful to self, being useful to others. But then at the same time, being a watchman upon the tower, I am always on call. Every single one of us, we are always on call. Jesus said men ought always to pray and not to faint. So I don't pray occasionally, neither should you. We should pray all the time. Now let me say this. And I want to say this not so that you can cast off restraint and say, okay, you know what, since this is how it works, I don't have to worry. Everything that God has asked you to do, your spirit does. Every single thing that God asks you to do, your spirit does. Why? The Bible says that which is born of God cannot sin. Your spirit is born of God your regenerated spirit, your new creation spirit is born of God. And for it not to sin, that means it lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Because if it is not, then it is falling short of the glory and it can no longer fall short of the glory because it has been reborn according to the similitude of Christ. Now what it means for your spirit to be born according to the similitude of Christ means your spirit before the Lord is like that of Christ. 
And Christ Jesus, the Bible says, he was tempted in every way as we are and yet without sin. So your spirit cannot sin. That's what the Bible says, not me. The Bible says that which is born of God does not sin, cannot sin, and it has already been glorified. Paul puts it this way. He says, I have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. He was calling the spirit that was in him, this new creation spirit, he calls it Christ. He says, Christ that lives in me, the glorified life. He says, this life which I now live is the glorified life of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And so if all of that is already going on in my spirit, what I need to do is I now need to shift my consciousness into the spirit because the Bible says if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. So if my spirit is already put into motion by perpetual light to be perpetual light itself, you know, Jesus, first of all, told his disciples, he says, I am the light of the world. And then he gave them demonstrations of what it means to be the light of the world. And the moment they got it, he turned around and he said to them, you are the light of the world. So I am light because I was born of light. And the Bible says, God, with him, there is no variableness because he is God. Neither is there a shadow of turning. You can never see light shining in one direction and suddenly it turns back. You may be able to reflect the light, but light does not turn back on itself. There is no shadow of turning. So light is perpetual by nature. It is consistent in its composition. That is what it is. Consistency and integrity is what light is. So if you are light, because Jesus says, as I am, so are you. And if he calls you light, so that means the spirit within you is without variableness, no shadow of turning, because it is an offspring of the one who dwells in unapproachable light. And that is what the gospel is. That's the good news. The good news is that, the good news is this. If I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth, Christ the Lord, I will be saved. And so the people who mistake, the people say things like, oh, you know, once you're saved, you're forever saved. It doesn't matter if you then go to live in sin. They don't get it because the reality of it is that that spirit of yours is saved. But you also need to be concerned about your soul. For Jesus says, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? What is your soul? Your soul is the consciousness that allows for you to enjoy the existence of your spirit. <laughs> your soul is the embodiment of the consciousness that allows for you to enjoy the existence of your spirit. Your spirit is eternal whether you're aware of it or not. As you are seated here, your spirit is seated in Christ Jesus at the right hand of the Father, where the temperature is always right, where there is joy forevermore. And so whenever you're sad, it's because you're not in the spirit, it's because you're more in the flesh. So your soul gets to suffer because of the choices that you make whilst all of that is available in the spirit. So when I am living in disobedience to the heavenly call, it is yet not I, but sin that dwells in me. Because I, the spirit that is the new creation spirit, does not live in disobedience to God. Paul said, who shall deliver me from this body of death that keeps making me to do the things that I will not to do? He said, that which I will not to do is what I practice. Who will deliver me from this body of death? Romans chapter 7. He says, but I thank God that even though I obey the laws of sin in my members, in my spirit, I obey the laws of God that is according to the inward man. What is the law of the spirit? It is called the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Which means when I am in Christ Jesus, I am life. When Jesus says, I am the way, 
the truth, and the life. He's letting you know the composition of the spirit that is in you. Your spirit is never lost because it is of the way. Your spirit is never dead because it is of the life. And your spirit is never confused, wrong, or ignorant because it is of the truth. It knows. The Bible says there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty gives him understanding. That is the Old Testament revelation. The New Testament revelation says we have an unction from the Holy One and we know all things. What is the unction? The unction of the Holy One that is on the inside of you, it is the blinking of the cursor of your spirit. Ugh. Let me, let me explain that. You see what unction is. Your spirit is seated in Christ Jesus, but it can ping your reality. When you have a computer, for those people who have computers or who had computers back in the day, in the year that John was born, if you had a computer back then, those computers had cursors that would blink on the screen. And when they're blinking, what are they waiting for? They're waiting for an impute. They're waiting for you to say something, to type something, and whatever you type gets acted on, right? You see, that blinking cursor is the unction. The real processing power is not what you're seeing on the screen. It is invisible to you. Your spirit is seated at the right hand of the Father, but there is an unction within you, which is an extension of the function of that spirit that allows for you to access all the power that that spirit carries. And the Bible says, because I have that unction, I know all things. So what does that mean? So come back to, the, to today's computer, the ones that were made in the year that Chris was born. These computers now have windows that are colorful. You may not see a blinking cursor after time, but you can click a window and type something into Google and it will tell you what you need to know, at least their worldly version of it. Heavily marketed version of it. Because what they show you is what somebody has paid for, not necessarily the truth. That's why the Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. But that is a story for another day. You see, your unction, that unction is just like that. The reason why you know all things is not because Brother Ron knows everything right now as he's sitting here. He probably doesn't even know what his wife is doing right now, whether she's praying or talking to someone on the phone or sleeping, unless there's a text message that tells him that. So we don't know all things until we make use of the unction. But then he can just ping his spirit by typing something into that window and say, what is, how far, how much? And then that spirit that is called the fountain of life. You know, Jesus says, I am the well of living water. Whoever drinks any other water will thirst again, but whosoever drinks of me will never thirst again. And then he turns around and says to his disciples, isn't Jesus amazing? What an awesome example he is. A great teacher, in fact. I mean, not even a great teacher. The teacher. Because he will show you, and then he will tell you, and then he will show you. So he said to them, I am the living water. And then he looked at them, and he says to you, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. That means, as I am a fountain of life, you also have become a fountain of life. Your spirit is always doing that which your heavenly father has said. We were not lied to by the Lord, you mean, by, by the apostles. The Lord Jesus told us the truth and the apostles bore witnesses to the truth that as he was, the Lord Jesus, so are we. As he is, so are we. As he will be, so shall we'll be. And what we mean by that is from justification to glory. Because whom he did for no, he predestined. Whom he predestined, he called. Whom he called, he justified. And whom he justified, he glorified. Jesus went through all of those things so that you can have a picture of the journey that you are meant to take. And that summarizes into this truth that your spirit can claim all that Christ is. And what did Jesus say concerning himself? He said... I do not speak my own words. That which I hear of the Father is what I speak. I do not do things just on my own accord. He says, that which I see my Father do is what I do. And that is the reason why the Bible says, for as many as are led 
by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. If you can be conscious of what is going on in your spirit all the time, that means you are walking in the Spirit and you are being led by the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit and being led by the Spirit, they're two different things, but they're very related. I just feel like I need to explain that. What it means to walk in the spirit is to allow the, your consciousness, which is the embodiment, which is your soul. And so your soul sometimes can be sitting down. But when your soul is active, it breathes consciousness. It creates consciousness. You see that consciousness? You have willpower that moves that consciousness. It's like a floodlight. I can move that consciousness to my flesh. And when you move the consciousness to your flesh, you can pick up on symptoms like headaches and frustrations and all kinds of things, physical infirmities and emotional trouble. You can pick that up and then your entire world will seem like it is nothing but pain and confusion and sorrow. And that is because that is where you point your consciousness. This same soul that God has given the privilege of all spiritual blessings in heavenly places is now living in penury because of debauchery, ignorance. You're being robbed of what you need to know. So you're picking up on all the six, six symptoms of, in, your, in, your, in your body as well as all the emotional chaos. But the moment you realize that that's where you're at, what are you supposed to do? You're not supposed to complain about it. It is part of the human experience. So what do you do? You do something about it. You shift that consciousness back into the spirit wherein the Bible says by his stripes, you have already been healed. You shift that consciousness into your spirit that is at the right hand of the Father where there is fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. So instead of pain incessantly, you have pleasures forevermore. Just switch by your willpower. And just say, you know what? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Today is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. You can move and say, now I'm in the spirit. That is what it means to walk in the spirit. But to be led by the spirit is slightly different. And you know what that is? What it means to be led by the spirit is that I'm not only walking in the spirit, enjoying all that consciousness for myself, I am now allowing the dictates of the Spirit to influence what is happening here. <laughs> you know, I can be in the Spirit on the Lord's day and just be having a good time in my house and just rejoicing in the Lord, speaking in tongues, revving in the Holy Ghost, whereas my brother is somewhere in need of love. I can be in the Spirit, but not led by the Spirit. I could just be at home and having a good time, seeing visions. Having conversations with the angels. Even though some of the angels are saying, do you not have somebody to bless? Because you've been sitting here all day. We know you're enjoying all of what we're doing here, but you also exist in another dimension. So to be led by the Spirit is to now allow this consciousness to affect and impact my activities, my devotions, and what I give. Where I was going with all of that is Jesus says men ought always to pray and not to faint. When Paul says we're praying for you always, that means he's aware that his spirit is praying always. You know, Jesus, the Bible says he forever lives to make intercessions for us. So in, in heaven, in the realm of the spirit, Jesus is praying for you all the time. And Paul says I'm praying for you all the time. That includes when he's sleeping because his spirit does not sleep, nor slumber. It, was, it is his flesh that sleeps. And so when the body is tired and sleeping, he allows his soul to shift gear into the spirit where prayers are going on consistently. God has set it in motion that you should pray always. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Even though your spirit is doing all of those things at all times, the measure of that that usually comes to bear in this mundane dimension, in this physical world, is the, me the measure of it that comes to bear, that, man that manifests, is a function of how much you choose to be in the Spirit. 
So I'm not just going to say my spirit is praying always, so I'm not going to open my mouth here and pray. You know what's going to happen? Since my spirit is praying always, all of the big victory will be in the spirit. Because the Bible says God is faithful and just. Ascribe greatness to our Lord, the rock. Deuteronomy. His word is perfect and all his ways are just. God is not going to allow you to pray in the spirit always, have victory in the spirit always, and somehow magically replicate that victory here where the, the praying has not happened. Because you have made room here and received the blessings here, but you haven't made room here. If I haven't sown here, how am I expected to reap what is here? So that is what we have been asked to do. We have been asked to walk in the spirit, to do our best possible to ensure that this mundane reality is aligned with that heavenly reality. It makes the work easier and more fun to do because I am not manufacturing my victory. I'm only aligning with it so that it can be reflected here. When you have that kind of understanding, you will pray different. You will pray from a place of victory as opposed to interceding and begging for a place from a place of penury. When I'm interceding, I'm interceding with power. I'm interceding and pleading with power. Even though it's, an hum, it's a humbled prayer, I'm doing it because I know it has already happened in the spirit. I am just making room for it to be fulfilled in the natural. So when Paul says, I'm, we're praying for you always because of your faith and because of your love for the beloved, I want to encourage you that go all out in his name and answer the call because you have heavenly support. I was going to take us to John chapter 1, but I'm not sure we have that much time, but I've made references to it. However, I wouldn't want to dismiss us today without letting us get a glimpse of the vision that I saw I was there minding my business, but then I realized that my spirit was somewhere and the burden was being received for intercession. And you know what I saw? I saw a big building like a monastery, like an old monastery, an old temple. But it wasn't just a temple for worship, but it was almost more like a place where priests were living. So is that what y'all, y'all do y'all know the word monastery here or monas monastery? Yeah, it will be called monastery here. Right, where priests are. And I saw these men, they were robed in white and they had ephods around their necks, ephods of different designs. Some of them were more boxy, some of them were more cascaded. Beautiful. And yet, many of them stood by the porches and their faces were long. They seemed like they were waiting and hoping for something to happen that hasn't happened and they were somewhat looking disappointed. It seemed as if they had hope, but at the same time, they didn't. And when I saw that, I was like, whoa, 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 what do we do? While I was yet speaking, they said to me, go and encourage them. Let them know that their Redeemer lives. I saw that, and it made sense to me, because I know that many of us in the times that we're in, if care is not taken, we would allow ourselves to come under the weight of the times that we are in. The times that we're in can be weighty, but the reality of it is that we are not alone. We are being interceded for. Even the cloud of witnesses, we are in the company of innumerable angels, in the company of just men, that have already been made perfect. Do you know what that means? You know we are just men. We are justified, but we are yet to be made perfect because we are still in the flesh. We are still in the body. But some people have put the body behind, people like Apostle Paul, and they have gained perfection. And that is the reason why he said for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. And the Bible says that you and I, were already in the company of innumerable angels and just men made perfect. So that means those just men that have been made perfect are continuing in the spirit to do what they started while they were here, which is to pray for you always with all manners of prayers. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because I do not think for a second that the Lord Jesus is interceding and the just men made perfect are chewing gum. No. No. Because they are spirit now, 
And when you're fully in the spirit, remember your spirit does everything that God has said. So when God says pray always, your spirit is praying always. When, you're, when the Bible says love all men, even the ones who are not deserving of it, that means your spirit loves everybody, even the ones who aren't deserving of it. Everything that God has commanded you to do, your spirit is already doing. And so all you have to do is just be less in the flesh, more in the spirit, and you'll be more pleasing to your heavenly father. And this life that you live here in the natural will start to look more like that life that is around the throne of grace. I saw those men, and my assignment was very clear that it is my duty to encourage them and to let them know that faithful is he who has promised. To encourage them and to let them know to just look around them and see where they're at. They're in this beautiful building. They're wearing these beautiful robes that represents righteousness. They have the ephods around their chest and they have some of the cascaded ephods around their necks that represents the royal priesthood that they are and the peculiar people that they have become in Christ Jesus. And yet, because of the fulfillment of certain things that they have yet, the fulfillment of certain things that have yet to come is making them now want for hope. I want to encourage you, do not be like those ones who for the lack of not having received what you have, you begin to lose sight of what you already are. We are not flesh and blood just, but we are spirit as our heavenly father is spirit. Let us lay aside every sin and weight that so easily besets us. The Bible says, who is it that is at war? No man that wars entangles himself with the affairs of this world. Let us now begin the journey of winning ourselves from the breast of the world because our sustenance does not come from what the society gives or what the world system provides. I say this again and again, and I'm beginning to sound like a broken record, just keep saying the same thing again and again. But I tell you what, we have not even said it enough. Do you know how many times they tell you in a day through media, through news, through everything that you need to depend on others other than God? And it's been happening all of our lives. There was a case that I saw being judged before the throne also earlier today. And it was a dissolved marriage. And the lady was like, God, how would you let my marriage be dissolved? And the Lord says, let me show you where you put your marriage relative to where you put everything else. And they put the education system above their marriage. They put the requirements of the society above their marriage. And all of those requirements weighed down on the marriage. The marriage looked, from what I saw, like a rod of iron that was bent out of shape. By God's design, it was meant to be strong, but it was carrying more weight than it was designed for. We need to start to put things in perspective. What are the things that matter? The things of your calling and the things of your election. Let us not allow the cares of this world or the foolishness of other people to weigh us down. I'm going to read to us one verse of scripture. We read it recently, but we're going to read it again. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 17. It is a gift that keeps giving. It says, therefore prepare yourself and arise and speak to them all that I command you. Do not be dismayed before their faces, lest I dismay you before them. This is the charge of the Lord to every single one of us, saints and priests, who may be of the company of those who are standing on the porches, looking as though they've been robbed of hope. The Lord is saying, get up. Arise and go and do that which I have commanded you. Arise and align yourself with your spirit. Align and stop being in the flesh. Do not deny and deprive your soul the privilege of all things made perfect. Do not deprive yourself of power that makes available the will of God upon the earth. He says, arise and do all that I've commanded you. Speak to them all that I command you and do not be dismayed before their faces. Lest I dismay you before them. If you would put together all the three or so things that I have said, this is the picture that I believe that heaven is painting for us tonight. That first of all, you need to be reminded of who you are in Christ Jesus. 
You need to be reminded that as he is, so are you. You need to be reminded that you have nothing to worry about because being a spirit being, you are eternally pleasing unto your heavenly father because you can do no wrong because Jesus never did wrong. Be reminded of that and let that be the confidence. Let that be your breastplate of righteousness. Let that be the confidence with which you approach life and in whatever areas of your mundane life wherein you are not yet in alliance with the spirit, call yourself to order. Tell yourself, I cannot keep grudge because love and grudge cannot dwell together. So give up the grudge and hold on to the love. I cannot be lazy when the Lord is asking me to pray because look at my spirit. My spirit is praying always. This laziness is alien to who I am. Drop the laziness. The Bible says those who walk in the darkness will stumble. So if I am doing anything in this life and I do not have clarity, I am setting up myself for the fall. So concerning my business, I speak life because I am light. Let there be clarity. I want to see exactly what I'm doing because in the spirit, I am not blinded. In the spirit, I see all things plainly. Because my spirit body is full of light. Let's begin to call ourselves to order. You are not judging yourself. You are not condemning yourself. You are just realigning yourself because who you are is already settled before your heavenly father. But how you are, on the other hand, is yours to choose. Who I am is spirit. Righteousness of God in Christ Jesus cannot do wrong. Obeys all of what God has commanded. And this is what the Holy Spirit said to me right now. He said, I want you to read it to them like I read it to you. He said to me, you need to begin by first of all commanding yourself to do all of what he says. We just read it now. He says, go to them. Command. You know what Paul said? Paul said, if I don't stop this body, this body will stop me. He said, I haven't led others to Christ. Will I now myself become a castaway? He said, God forbid. Therefore, I put my body under. I bring my body under subjection. All of that ego under subjection. All of those weaknesses and emotional fluctuations under subjection. So if you do not speak boldly to your flesh to align, or let me put it correctly, if you do not speak boldly to your soul to align with your spirit, it will be dismayed before your flesh. Because the flesh is waiting to condemn you. The flesh is waiting to make you feel guilty because the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 1 that there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit because according to the flesh what you have is guilt, condemnation, and filth. But in the spirit you have righteousness, peace, and joy. And so what do you do? Speak to yourself boldly and, command, and say to your soul you will do all of what the Lord has commanded. You, you will pray with all manners of prayers. You will love without reservation. You will answer the call of God where he says go, you will go. What he says give, you will give. What he says do, you will do simply because the Lord has given your spirit that boldness with which to tell your soul how to live its life. Praise the Lord. We're going to go ahead right now and break bread. But do not remain where you have been. Your hope is one that is immune to shame. The Bible says we have a hope that makes not ashamed. Faithful is he who has promised who will also do it. So don't, don't just stand there waiting for something to happen. Be that thing and happen. Come on. You need to be that phenomenon. <laughs> that reminds me, that is William's nickname, the phenomenon. <laughs> Be that phenomenon. Be the, be the change. Be the light. Be the life. Because that is who you are. Matthew 9, 27. Real quick as we break bread. When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him crying, crying out saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him and Jesus said to them, do you believe that I am able to do this? And they said to him, yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, according to your faith, let it be to you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus sternly warned them, saying, see that no one knows it. But they departed from there, of course, obviously, spreading the news. I love Matthew. Matthew is the one that is always telling us that there are two men. When other people say there is one. Remember the, the account of uh, 
the, the madman of the gatherings. And, and when I asked the Holy Spirit about the discrepancy, he says there is no discrepancy. He said, I'm just letting you in, have an insight into the nature of the man. The man sees in both dimensions simultaneously. So the two blind men that we're talking about here is one, your spirit that was not yet born again, it was blind. Your soul was also blind. But now both of them have been given eyes to see. Do not allow your soul to be blinded again. Your spirit is seeing, your soul also needs to see. And to see, you need light. So fill yourself with light at all times. Many of us need to speak more. I don't say become a talkative, but what I'm saying, be active in your talk. Only Charles got that one in Rosemary. Come on, that's a good rhyme, isn't it? Josephine, what do you think? No, you're laughing like it's funny, but it's a good thing. You're good. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Don't just be a talkative, but be active in your talking. And what I mean by that is shut down thoughts with words. If you're trying to fight thought for thought, it doesn't always work. And you know it. Because then you wander into other thoughts, defeated. But when the thought comes, the Bible says we need to bring every thought to subjection. We need to, hold, we need to bring them to subjection to the obedience of Christ. And how do you do that? You use your words, you speak, because those thoughts will start like this. Man, you're about to be 36, you know. Maybe you're not even going to be married. Maybe God doesn't want you to be married. You look like one of those people, maybe like Apostle Paul. You're not, gonna, you're not supposed to be married. And then you start thinking, oh, maybe that's true, you know. I've always been thinking about it. I, know you, I can't even be asked to wake up at 2 a.m. to cook for some hungry man. And yeah. And then you begin to agree in your thoughts. And before you know what's going on, you are no longer able to see that with God has in front of you because you've allowed your soul to be blinded by suggestions that came straight out of the pit of hell. The doctrine of demons, as they say, maybe not from hell, but from the mouth of demons. So what do you do when those thoughts come? You speak the word of God and says, the Bible says, the Lord places the solitary in families and it is not good for a man to be alone. Therefore, let us make a help that is meet. And so what do we do? I am already help that is meet. I am one that has been designed to walk alongside with another in the holy partnership that will deliver kingdom come upon the earth. You speak that which is the mind of the Lord and watch how your emotions will quickly check out and go and sit in the little corner, not bothering you again. At least for another 24 hours. Because you know Delilah, she nags repeatedly. And that's how temptations come, repeatedly. So what do you do? You also have to speak continually. That is a bonus track for somebody. You can, you can, you can come and give me a gift later. May our eyes remain open. When the Holy Spirit gave me this scripture, my heart rejoiced because of the fact that um, it reminds me of the men on their way to Emmaus. You know, there were two of them also, and they were blind. You have to be really blind to be walking with Jesus for seven miles and not know it. I mean, for a, I mean, not even for half a mile would you be with the Lord. Look at John the Beloved. When he saw the Lord Jesus, he fell upon his face. Even before Jesus was glorified, when he was raised from the dead, what was that called? Justification. The Bible says that we have been raised, that Jesus was raised from the dead for our justification. When he, raised, when he was raised from the dead, he was justified because he said he was going to be raised from the dead and he was raised from the dead. So he was justified, but he was not yet glorified because he hadn't gone to the Father who showered him with glory. But people who saw him, even still recognized that it was him. It took a while, but they did. Eventually, they were like, that's you. Of course, you know, the first time they mistook him for a gardener because he was coming straight out of Hades covered in smoke, so he looked like someone who was preparing for the planting season, who had just burnt bush, because when they saw him, they mistook him for a gardener. But then after a while, when the smoke blow, was blown away, they looked at him again, and they were like, this is the Lord. And he says, don't touch me yet, because I've not yet been glorified. But the point is, justified Jesus was recognizable. How much more glorified Jesus? They had to be blind, and they were blind, because the Bible says when Jesus broke bread and he gave to them, then their eyes were open, and they saw that it was the Lord. Two men 
two men. Spirit, soul. May your eyes remain open. So as we break bread today, I want you to receive the body of Jesus and his blood once again in remembrance of him, saying to yourself, these eyes will remain peeled. I will not be blinded. I will see who I am. I will see what the Lord has for me. As I look, if there's anything that I haven't seen, I begin to see them now. For my encouragement, for my empowerment, for my peace, I begin now to see all of what the Lord has for me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hmm. The Bible says, let him who speak. I cure your disappointment and discouragement now in the mighty name of Jesus. I say that over you today as an oracle of God because that unction is active and it is curing discouragement tonight. By the power of the Holy One, it is curing through the love of your heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, your discouragement is being cured tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Once again, you will be fired up. You will be refired. Oh, Ramado, unto every good work. Lake Romanda. Let me tell you something. It will look like laughter. You will just feel like laughing in the, you know, going out of here today, even beginning now. You just want to laugh, just want to bubble in the spirit. Because it's one of the ways by which you know that your spirit is talking to you and you can hear it. Because the Bible says, he who sits in the heavens laughs. If you can see your spirit right now, it's laughing. This is the way your spirit is interceding in heaven. Because he who sits in the heavens laughs. And so stop wearing a long face. It is not befitting of the priest that you are. Lift up your face. Arise and speak to them to do all of what the Lord has commanded. Speak to your soul that it is time to pray because the Lord commands it. It's time to win souls because the Lord commands it. It is time to walk perfect and upright before him because the Lord commands it. It is time for you to shine because the Lord commands it. You may eat of the Lord's body and drink of his blood in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, I'm glad I came tonight. Praise the Lord. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. He has done me well. Oh, my soul, rise up and praise the Lord. I thank you, Jesus, because these things have not been revealed to them who claim to be people. Of significance, but it has been revealed to the ones who humbly answered the call when you said, Follow me. May we always say, Yes, Lord, when you call, because dignity is what we find when we answer your call. Glorious company is where we find ourselves when we answer your call. You know, there was a light that shone in this place. Earlier, when I came on here and I was singing, 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 I, th I don't think I've ever sung like that in this place. I sang a lot today. It wasn't just me. There was a flash of light. It was a bright light. I, did you see it? You saw it too? Because I, I thought it wasn't, I mean, I mean, I just knew it couldn't have been myself alone that saw the light. Just imagine a balloon that is full of light exploding and that light in an instant. It was, a, it was a flash of light. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you. Oh, the Lord says to pray. I pray for you that in the mighty name of Jesus, that you will not wonder how, but that you will just rise. Just see yourself rising. Because many of us, we want to analyze, how am I going to rise? What does it mean to rise? You have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. You already know how. Because you have understanding. Understanding is what answers the question, how? So don't be where you've been. Just rise. 
I speak to you today prophetically and authoritatively in Christ Jesus that you will rise and pray. You will rise and shine. You will rise and speak. God is good. I think many more of us need to listen to the word that came forth for Jay today. You know, because that word was talking about going out there and compelling them to come. Don't just ask them to come. Compel them to come. I have the life of God in me. Can you say that with me? I have the life of God in me. I have the spirit of the Son of God. I have the life of God in me. When we were children, it was one of my favorite songs whenever we went to children's church. I have the life of God in me. I have the life of God in me. I have the spirit of the Son of God. I have the life of God in me. Don't worry, I'm going to keep singing to you because singing is one of the ways by which we memorize stuff so that these things can stick with you also. Lastly, before I ask Alan to come, I'm going to quickly um, do some things. Okay, I'm going to do it in secret. Tell me to tell you what I need to tell her afterwards. God is good. God bless you folks. Can we just rise up for a moment, everybody? Let's just not, let's not be tired because our spirits are never tired. The Lord said to me, because when I said let us rise, I didn't know why. And as soon as you stood up, he said that's more like it. I want their heads in the cloud. Because you need to start thinking heavenly. So, Lord, I thank you for having given us this privilege and the help also for being our help in the person of your Holy Spirit. Because we did not know we needed to do this, but now that we are standing here and our heads are in the cloud of your glory, let our thinking also be glorious. Let us think like men and women of glory. Let us think as sons of glory. In the name of Jesus, be seated. God bless you. Alan. Hallelujah. God is good. What a night tonight. Ain't you glad you came? We're going to go ahead and press in and I give it. The given details will be there on the screen in just a bit. Let's be reminded how we've been encouraged to give sacrificially and just give and cheer for what the Lord is doing in this house. Putting our hand to the plow. And being thankful for who the Lord has set before us, this ministry that we are a part of. Amen. God is good. All righty. You'll see it there on the screen if you need an envelope. Our dear brother Kenyatta is here. Giving online. Communion.house slash give. PayPal at Communion House. Cash up. Dollar sign. Communion House. We'll wait a few more seconds and pray. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for a night of healing, O oh God, of curing deep down. For you have done it. You have met with us, O oh God, and have granted unto us laughter. Who else can do these things, O oh God? except you, by your word, by the ministration, O oh God, by your Holy Spirit, through your Son, Jesus Christ, O oh God, we have beheld you tonight, and we thank you for your hand, O oh God, for your move in our midst, fulfilling your word that says where two or three are gathered together in your name, there you are in the midst of them, and we have something very tangible, O oh God, that we can take with us, a sign unto us being encountered by you, experiencing you tonight. Lord, as you are here and dwelling in your, in your midst and your presence is strong amongst us, O oh God, let these offerings, O oh God, that we prepare be found pleasing unto you. We thank you for you have reminded us how to be led of your spirit, how to walk by your spirit. Lord, quicken us tonight in our giving. Lord, that we may not be found wanting, that it be pleasing unto you, sweet smelling. 
We thank you, upon, well, thank you for every household represented here as we stretch forth in giving, O oh God, and being a blessing to the house. And Lord, we know that indeed you shall bring increase and multiplication, for you have done it even by your word, declaring that our light has come. All glory and honor belong to you. And we all said, amen. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate the Lord again. God is good. We've been charged up to pray. Let's press into that. A wonderful way to do is by joining us tomorrow, Instagram Live, 9 p.m. every week. We're going to be praying and pressing into what the Lord has for us. Amen. All righty, everyone have a blessed night.